I just can't get my head around this whiskey. It's an enigma to me. Hang around and I'll tell you why. What about your whiskey lovers? Welcome to another episode of Whiskey Straight with me, Big Al. And today I'm bringing you another recently released Irish whiskey. It's the Dunville's 1808, so named because that was the year the brand was founded. Now this is a blended Irish whiskey and that blend is of malt, pot still and grain whiskies. It's bottled at 40% ABV and it'll cost you around 33 quid. So I'll give you a wee bit of a background uh, to Dunville's and I'll pop a link to the distillery and the website uh, down in the description below because it's really an interesting read but I'll give you a brief synopsis here before we go right into the tasting obviously going back to 1808 Dunville's was known as the spirit of Belfast and that's actually referenced on the label on the bottle where you can see a picture of a mural dating back to the 1800s uh, in Victoria Square in Belfast we do like our mirrors in Northern Ireland, even way back then. Everything was booming for the business at the time. All was going great, producing vast amounts of whiskey. And then tragedy struck. The owner, Robert Lambert Dunville, died, aged just 38. And after that, the distillery went into decline and was eventually put into liquidation by the directors in 1936 and Dunville's was gone. Roll on 2012 the Acklandville distillery was born it became the first distillery in Ireland in 125 years and they brought back the Dunville's name and this is the latest of that range so let's have a look to see what it's like now, I said at the start that this whiskey is a bit of an enigma to me. So, why can I not get my head around it? Why is it giving my noggin a flogging? I would say most of you guys have probably watched Forrest Gump. And this whiskey is like that great saying from Forrest Gump's ma. Life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. And with this whiskey... I feel it's the same. You never really know what you're going to get. It's a bottle that I spent a lot of time with and it keeps changing all the time. Every time I go to it, it's something new. I'm getting new flavours, new aromas. Um, you know what? I've written down so many contrasting notes that my head's about to go to destination boogaloo. So, as you can see behind me, I'm right down to the dregs of the bottle. There's literally nothing left. So let's hope it bulges us up and it all goes according to plan. And I'll just go for it. Keep in mind my notes, but see if anything new crops up today. So, as you know, whiskey is always better when it's shared. So, if you have a bottle of this, pour yourself a wee dram and we'll enjoy a drink together. We'll start off on the nose. It's not you. A really buttery, creamy impression right off the bat. Getting butterscotch rhubarb. And then comes through lemon in the form of a lemon curd. Then it becomes cloudy lemonade. Some of those fruits remain. Yes, the rhubarb again. Bit of apple. But then once you get right in there, there's a bit of fudge and toffee. But deep down below, there's that aroma of an old room that's never much used. You know, that fusty dankness. But you have to get right into it to get that. 
So let's try on palette. A very, very fruity arrival. Strawberry, vanilla, and then with, I don't know where, a waft of smoke. And it is a tad surprising because there's no element of that in the nose, but right off, fruity, 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 boom, smoke. But there you have it, and it is there. Uh, thankfully, it's not overpowered, it is very subtle. Whilst on the nose, it does have that buttery, creamy impression on the palate. It's actually a tad sharp, and there's like a light sizzling on the tongue, like sizzling peppered butter. So it does retain a wee bit of butteriness, but the, the sharpness outweighs that. And then comes a grainy element and some perfume notes. And mostly when I get that distinct perfumey note of whiskey, it is kind of off-putting. And here we go off in a different direction once again. Fruity, lemon, toffee, another light waft of smoke. Cherry spice. Mm. Licorice. Char. Even a touch of hairspray. You might be thinking, what would I know about hairspray? Like, look at the cut of me. But, I do have a wife. Mm. I'll leave it at that for fear of getting into trouble. Right, let's see what we get in the finish. As I've already alluded to, while there is that creamy buttery element to the mouthfeel, it's not as relevant as the nose would lead you to believe. It remains a tad sharp. The finish is short to medium and with that, you do get all those sort of like elements that I got from the tasting. It's fruit, toffee, vanilla, and finishes off to a char. I'm not really digging this whiskey. It just doesn't do enough for me. Now, what I mean by that is, there's lots going on because of the three whiskey types and there's a lot of different flavours and aromas but for me they're all coming together in the bottle and they're not playing the same game. It's like each one is trying to outweigh the other and they're not in this they're in the same team but they're pulling against each other. It all comes in waves. You get the pot still sticking its head up to be the top dog, then the malt, then the grain. And they don't do it in a consistent way. That's my opinion. It's just something I don't think I'll buy again. And I'm a, a, a tad disappointed with it because I was hoping for a wee bit more, but maybe it's just my palate. It, maybe it just doesn't suit me, but I would like it to be a bit more consistent and balanced and like all those whiskies to complement each other better than I feel they do. So with that said, I think it's going to have to be a 79 for this one. So... If you've had a bottle of this, let me know your thoughts down below. Do you feel differently than I do? It's always great to interact with you guys. Thanks once again for your support. Really does mean a lot to me. If you want to support the channel in other ways, all the links are in the description down below to my Patreon, Subscribestar, PayPal, and you can even buy me a coffee. How about that? But anyway, no obligation. Just if you feel a wee bit frugal.
and you want to support the channel. So, thanks for hanging out, folks. It's been great having the pleasure of your company once again. And on to the next time, look after each other, look after yourselves, and keep on drinking your whiskey the way you like to. Sludge Thanks for watching folks, I really do appreciate it. Please check out these other reviews and if you'd like to support the channel, the best way is by subscribing, liking and commenting. And don't forget to ring that bell for all video notifications so you don't miss out on any future content. Cheers.